Hey, oh, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and I am joined with Wix. Hi. And we're going to be doing our first Planet Coaster Fairground Farms Let's Build, where we're actually building up the park using the blueprints that you guys saw from the Fairground Blueprints series. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, so here we go, guys. This is me building. Johnny Five Alive driving the camera here today. So going into this, um, I basically we finished the blueprint spotlights, and we were sitting on what like a hundred wicks. Yeah, something, something like that. A hundred amazing creations from you guys in the community, and the map was pretty much bare, as you guys saw from you know what Chance sculpted, and then we did Coaster Cad came in and did the coaster. So from there, I basically had all an empty fairground farms to work with, but also a hundred blueprints to figure out how how I'm going to place them and how I'm going to use them. So, and there's also considering, I hadn't played Planet Coaster in a while and I'm a little bit rusty, so I was a little bit concerned going into this one and I knew I had to kind of iron out some wrinkles. So these first little batch of recordings, you're going to see me like kind of going all over the place, back and forth, touching up here, touching up there. So what I'm doing here is I, I, I wanted... I had the vision that you saw that sign there, that welcoming sign that, um, who made that one, Wix? I think it was Taco King. Taco King, yeah. Yeah, Taco King made this wonderful sign, and you can see me looking at it there for a quick glimpse. Um, it says, Welcome to Fairground Farms, and it has some rolling hills with a barn at the top. And I thought that was, it was a beautiful job that he did on that, but why not try to have his, a simplified version of the real thing? So basically, I wanted to recreate that with more detail, um, having that as the opening shot. This is Fairground Farms, and we should have some crops. Um, now, doing it on a hill gives you this kind of more cartoony, lifelike vibe, but it doesn't... Um, it doesn't make it easy for placing crops. <laughs> you guys will see oh, that no, no. Because you're on a hill and most people built things to a flat terrain. So I knew I was doing this and I was like, this is going to be a real pain in my butt. But in terms of composition, I think it paid off. What do you think, Wix? Oh, yeah. No, now I know how it looks here at the end. And it's it's really, really... It really... Is, yeah, it gives it a great farm vibe for sure. Uh and, so. Yeah, so shout out to Taco King because it hadn't not been for his little sign, I may not have had come up with that idea. Basically, my inspiration came from that sign, and I thought, you know, going into this, I want some sort of composition. I don't want just flat ground, and I, I should do some terrain work. You know, Chant did a lot with the terrain, but she basically she did some she she roughed it out she expected us to change things and move things as we go so i didn't want to just have this whole flat open area that i'm like okay let's just plop down blueprints and put some paths in and have it a mess no like we want to we want to handcraft it a little bit so the rolling hills at the top of the hill i thought this um foxy's uh who made this one that was haplo or uh dead no, eye duck? Dead -eye duck yeah Dead Eye Duck, yeah. So he he did a really nice red barn. Um, it was a coffee shop, and that that worked really well to kind of match what was in the sign. Here in the center, <laughs> the, the the cove, um, there's all the guaranteed blueprints. I placed them down. So every every episode that we did in the blueprint spotlights. Um, Every one of the ones that we picked as our favorites, we said that they were guaranteed to get into the park. So I placed them over on the island there and uh, just, you know, so I could go over and make sure that I'm not forgetting about them, as well as like look at them and trying to get an idea. And here you see me just placing down blueprints and, you know, looking at what we have available. It's, it's quite, I mean, having everybody do these blueprints was incredible, but it also causes a whole nother issue of like, sorting through them, figuring out know, what you have, figuring out know, what you're going to do with it. And even the ones that are really good, like oh, you, you see me looking at this lollipop tractor farm. It's it's pretty great, but then I'm just testing here, like how would I use this on my hill? It's, I would essentially have to redo the whole thing, right? Yeah. So yeah, some of these blueprints are amazing, but they might not actually fit or work perfectly. So everything needs to be modified. So it's a matter of digging them up and figuring out what's gonna work and how you can use it. And then also um, deconstructing it so that we can make it work. So here I basically delete the whole lollipop farm and just use this like one little asset 
of the crop and then the one that's also mowed down and then obviously I'm also using the tractors so I put the other tractors off to the side this I could kind of put it fit it on the hill and then use a couple of the pieces and then from there I would just you know duplicate and use them so here I'm just kind of playing around with the idea well will this work and you'll see me doing that a lot for this whole figuring out phase that's what this first episodes all about is you know getting a feel for pieces how I'm gonna use them what kind of concepts can I come up with uh, how how will the area look overall and you know where where can I fit these kinds of things in right yeah um, and one thing I want to mention <clears throat> that I, I talked to about Wix and, and Chant is, you know, the new grouping system is a bit of pain in the butt in the sense that before we would group everything in buildings, right? But the nice thing that was, that was good about that before is when you separated them, they now all became individual pieces. You know what I mean? But now, when something's grouped and you select a bunch of stuff and you separate them, it separates those into a new group. It's a real pain in the butt. So if you wanted to take 10 items out of a building, you would have to select that 10 items, remove them, and then select each one of those items one by one and remove them all. Um, there's no good group hierarchy system in Planet Coaster right now. And when we did our review on this new feature, when I think it came out with the Vintage Pack, mm -hmm. and me and me and Chant went over it, we're like, oh no, this might, this might be actually a bad feature. And in most cases, I would say it does hurt the system a little bit because we were used to putting things into a, a building piece, grouping them together. But what actually happened that way is it created a hierarchy. So you have um, a bunch of things grouped to one building. That's its hierarchy. If you separate that building from those pieces, now they're all individualized. So you can actually get back to the core pieces, but then you can also have five different groups within one blueprint, right? So it's broken down into a hierarchy. Now, Planet Coaster doesn't really have a good hierarchy system. None at all. It's either merge everything or have a bunch of different groups. And if yeah. you select them all and you hit <laughs> merge, you can never separate it again unless you control select control select and pull things out one by one and make groups again so a lot of these things that i was playing around with is um it, it was tricky because i needed to change the color of something but somebody had merged everything so i, I want to make this to, as a request to the people who are building for us specifically and also to everyone that's just building in general i think it's good to have certain main pieces like uh, I'll take an example of the honeycomb farm. Someone made this really good thing. The jar of honey should be its own blueprint, or at least its own group within the blueprint, right? Um, you know, the syrup coming off the sides and stuff, that should be in its own group. So I could select it and recolor it. Or if you give it to someone else, they can select it and recolor it, whoever downloads it. So just keep that in mind that build pieces like if it's a nice little blueprint like you made a shack but that shack's a part of a house save keep the shack in its own group and you know like if if you have some little tiny um, carts and things out front of the house keep those in their own group whatever you build try to break it down into groups then select that whole thing and don't merge it just upload it because what happens now is if someone wants to move it they could just select all the groups together and move it um, but if they just want to use, if they want to duplicate that one shack, they would have to basically deconstruct your whole building. But now they could just select that shack and duplicate it. So it gives people a lot more control over what they use from your blueprint and what they don't want to use from your blueprint. And for me, specifically in Candyland, I'm going to want to make changes to make things fit. So if you mm -hmm. can, if you could think about that, guys, moving forward, break it down as much as you can, um, so that I can use little pieces. It, it make our lives a whole lot easier. Um, yeah. Right, Wix? Yeah, I think also when I tried a little bit uh, looking at all of some of the blueprints that uh, some of them has really nice uh, small details that would be nice to, to uh, for example, Dead Eye Dog's chickens or his cabbage he made out of uh, some jelly beans or something. Right, and the um, moment you grab that whole building and hit merge all, now you got to go in there and select all the little chicken pieces and sometimes you're selecting the bush and it gets really painful right? yeah 
Um, exactly. The, the, what I've noticed, and I started picking up speed, is if I did just want that chicken, I would uh, select it and everything around it. Like, you know, just select it as much as I can, move it away to the side, and then just start deleting everything I don't want until the chicken's by himself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's there's ways about it, but you know, you destroy the r original blueprint in the process, so you kind of need to make a backup. Like, bring in the new blueprint, and start removing all the bits and pieces, and get down to what you just need. Um, some people have done a good job with grouping. I think Dead Eye Ducks building actually, like the hay bales were by themselves, and like some of the pieces were all by themselves. So it's pretty good. So just keep that stuff in mind, guys. Keep things. You know, that cart there that you saw on the the farm for Dead Eye Duck, those jelly beans should be a part of the cart. Anything on that should be a part of it and group that and then slide it into place and leave it. That way, if I need to move it, I could grab the whole cart and then I don't have to grab the jelly beans after and all that. So, and I think this, this little thing that I request is actually really great for a building principle in this game because the hierarchy is either merge all or a bunch of groups. I think it's way better to have a bunch of groups because it's, you know, it going back to it again, it's that somebody places it down, it's one big blueprint at the beginning, and then they deselect it. Now it's a bunch of different blueprints. They always have the option to marquee select and have it all together. I mean, you can't mm -hmm. duplicate it, but you could always duplicate it technically by placing down an entirely new blueprint. So that's the way better way to do it because now you can duplicate the small things and you can also duplicate the whole thing by placing a whole new blueprint. So anyways, getting back to what I'm doing here, I was struggling with Dead Eye Duck's um, shop. I couldn't get it pathed in here. And what I wanted to do is have a path running through the whole building. And um, it was something I've finagled with for a bit, but I, I guess he didn't actually test the pathing system. Um, because there's something conflicting and here I am fiddling around with the roof, trying to delete the roof and moving things and seeing if I can get it to work. And also discovered why he had those tires there in the cart. It was to hide that little uh, planter piece sticking through the bottom. And so I, I ended up getting the path to go through there, but it's very oddly shaped. So you can use the benches and the garbage cans to make sure that people don't, like, walk into stuff. Um, you know, and it's, it's a nice way to kind of navigate the AI so they're not just walking through tires and things like that. But anyways, I had to remove the shop and put an entertainer point in, but I also couldn't fit the entertainer point in perfectly either. It's kind of clashing in the wall. I'm trying to figure out how do I cover this up so it's not just half cut off. And I thought, you know, like the foxy sign might work, but that's getting cut off too. And it was just a pain in the butt, so I ended up going with like, um... <laughs> this silly trick <laughs> it's like bent. Well, it works it, it, it works. works but it's literally it looks a little silly it's bent but it's literally the best i could do here with with what space was available with the um i guess the path bugging out and all that so i didn't want to spend too much time on it uh so i got it in there so this whole top area is like foxy's entertainer point uh, i think i end up putting like a pond or something up there maybe a, a bathroom an outhouse i don't did you do anything up there wix no i don't think i've nope yeah, so, it. so there's there's a little bit of stuff up there, but ba basically people go all the way up there to meet Foxy at the top of the hill. I thought it was a good spot to have her. It's it's a it's a landmark. It's a focal point because it's at the highest point of the hills, and you at the if you go to the very very beginning or back up the camera a little bit, and you look up the ways, you see the rolling hills leading up to the barn and Foxy being there. So it, it is a focal point from wherever you are in Fairground Farms. You look over and you see that really important barn and Foxy's inside. So it's it's a great spot for the entertainer point. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, just, uh, you, you know, you can... Um, maybe you forgot, you have the barriers and curbs now instead of using the uh, trash cans. For, I uh, did forget about people. that. How, however, um, <laughs> you they only work really well for stuffing them into a wall. My paths weren't my paths weren't going through walls. They were going through like tires and things. So yeah, yeah. yeah. If you had it a works. barrier, it would be it would you would see it, and you can't hide the barrier in my case. So having a trash can or something is probably better in that case. But yeah, uh, the barriers would work in some situations. Um, so who who did this honeybee thing? Do you remember? I think it was uh, Mina, right? Mina? 
Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Amazing job with this. And I'm just playing around with it because they had these uh, honey hive dispenser things. I was trying to see if I could fit a popcorn machine or something in there. And I actually can, but I don't think I ended up going with that overall. I thought it would be cool to see the guests walking up to it and actually like interacting with it and walking away with something. And it's almost like your little honey beehives are little money making machines you know it, it's 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 some, it's something interactive and fun um what i ended up going with later on you'll see is the um the honey jars so i had some fun with that uh so this this honeybee stuff we had that little honey comb crop that someone did and i picked that one as my favorite um and then we had the honey flat ride as well as the syrup farm and they all had little elements so I wanted to do something unique because having a, a whole area dedicated to honey, it's natural sweets, right? Mm -hmm. So it's su such a great thing to have in Fairground Farms. So I think that's something good to talk about here is, you know, they're, they're, by the time you guys see it, we will have multiple different themed sections in Fairground Farms. And when you step back, and I don't know why I left the, the auto paint as... Um, <laughs> Snow. <laughs> but it, it, it did it did make it easy for me to see where I was digging this out but holy moly that's horrendous um, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry it gets painted over it's it's fine <laughs> I did I did the same uh, when I was in it I yeah. forgot to yeah I'm, I'm just like not used to the new auto paint tools so I guess new ish for me it's new and I was just like oh whatever I'll fix it later um, it would have been a lot faster to just go ahead and change it right away, but uh, When you're gray blocking things you don't really care You don't need to fuss so much like you know You're just trying to I, I didn't even know if that river there was going to be something I wanted to keep um, I was just thinking like So the reason for it is we have the remotion track ride, right? Mm -hmm. It comes it comes out of that barn and it loops around but if it loops around and goes through the park uh Paths cannot cross over it without a bridge. And it cannot go under it because it goes so low into the ground because we're hiding the track. And you can see me playing around with it, seeing like what, what chant we'll have to deal with with the track. And I'm like, okay, so I will need bridges to go over this track. There's no way around it. But it would look silly to go like, why is there... And you're seeing me like take a glimpse at it and see how it works. And the people do get their feet wet a little bit. They go under the bridge, but it works. And the the ride can go straight from ground into water. And you can even sink it into water if you want. It's pretty cool. So I I kind of had the the go ahead by testing this to you know continue forward. But I did this because yeah, like why are there bridges in the middle of this farm? Like oh, it's it's so it can go over the ride. But you don't see the ride. Like, if if we didn't have a river there, or it was just all dirt or, or grass, the ride, you wouldn't notice the ride until you actually see it going by, right? There would, mm -hmm. you, you don't see the tracks. They're completely hidden. Um, you know, maybe we'll have to do something in the very end where we, you know, put some basic shape fake tracks in just above it or... Uh, paint terrain paint like a black line or I don't know something to indicate this is the path that the the, the, the track takes but uh, for the most part the guests and the viewers and anyone looking at this will be completely unaware that there is a ride going through here so those bridges would look completely random so now you have some water there. It justifies why there's bridges. So you look at it and you don't really know that the water was there and the bridges were there as a solution to the remotion track ride. So that whole water area in that pond is technically, it's there so that the track ride has something to go around. And again, you cannot build on the inside because you would have to path over that and into it. So yeah. basically we big draw this big loop. Anything on the inside of that loop cannot be there in the park. Otherwise you're gonna have to bridges networks like going up and over it and all to this tiny little space. So it made a great opportunity to just say, okay, this is the barnyard, the station, with water 
and that fills in that big loop that the, 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 the track ride's gonna do. And if you're riding the outskirts of the, the lake and you're looking out, you get to see all the different zones and you get to pass by all the different farmlands uh, on the track ride. So it, it'll give you a nice shot of everything in the end. And this, this could be something tricky for us and challenging for us going forward because as this track ride starts navigating through some of the other areas that we have in the park, we got to <clears throat> consider what we're going to do for bridges and how we're going to path over it and which direction we're going to take it. Because again, anytime you draw a loop with that, you cannot build in there. Um, yeah. So we got to hug it to terrain. We got to sneak it by things and uh, scooch it around. It's, it's going to be something tricky going forward. But then you have to also consider what is it able to look at based off of where you're hiding it. If you just hide it along cliff walls and sneak it by things, you might never get a good vista. So it's a quite a delicate balancing act, and uh, I'm definitely going to be, you know, um, back and forth with Chant on it, because she has all these stories that she's telling for each of the lands. You guys heard it in episode one, um, the Candyman land for Fairground Farms. <laughs> she, she, uh, she'll be reading off some of the other stories going into this. Um, in fact... Yeah, yeah. She she read me the Gulpy one, and I thought it was amazing. So, uh, it's it's really cool. So yeah, each one of these stories she's got to tell and, and and do that while we're on the track ride. So I'm gonna be definitely thinking about that level design, and also trying to consider her her story to try to get the best vistas and also um, still have a good park layout. So quite a ba interesting balancing act. It's something that I don't think has ever been done before in Planet Coaster. Um, a track ride that takes you along a whole park. A re-motion track ride that tells a story. So it should definitely be a unique experience. Um, oh, for sure. <clears throat> so what you see me here doing is uh, one of the honey syrup machines from the syrup farm. It was really cool, but it wasn't quite the maple color. Or I guess, what is it, like tree wax? Is that how they make honey? Or I mean syrup? Yeah, I it's think like, so. Yeah. Comes from trees, though. <laughs> trees, yes, yeah, sap or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I should know this, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it didn't have that uh, sappy, syrup-looking color to it, and there was white in there and stuff. And it's like, well, this doesn't work for me. And um, the honey glaze that you see on the honey farm pieces, it's a perfect honey, um, but it's the same for the syrup the syrup should be a lot darker syrup is a richer dark honey brown right mm -hmm. so i had to basically deconstruct that object and you know uh, break down all the pieces and that's what led me to that little rant that i went on earlier in this episode that if you guys make something really cool like all those little buckets of syrup um the the whole gems themselves could be in a group so you could just select the gem group and recolor it and i i i, I did that i broke it apart i ended up deleting it after because i was i did what i needed to do with it but man breaking down some of these blueprints is a real pain in the butt so even like those things that you see hanging from the tree if they're all in one group you could just recolor them so it's something to consider i don't think you guys have to go that crazy for it but um, or like if you're just as a building tip, you don't have to go that crazy. But if you do it, you give people the option to recolor something. So if you look at something and you think of customization and you go, would I like to recolor this? Then you should probably have it in your own group because if you're building it for yourself and you could see multiple uses for multiple different colors, then you should separate it. So you see me there with the gems there. I have it separated. Now I could color that green if I wanted to. I could do whatever I want. I could color it blue. So that when you're doing the gem things, um, gem panels, I think it's great to uh, have them in their own group so you can just grab it, change the color. You, Whoever downloads your blueprint goes, oh, that's nice, I have that feature now, and they don't have to break it apart. Um, you know, it just makes building easy for other people. And if you think of that in terms of like kits, you're giving people a bunch of little bit mini blueprints within your blueprint and now they can use two or three pieces and you know they can uh, now they can build stuff a lot faster without having to deconstruct yours and the mo the reason they're downloading your blueprint for the beginning is to put it in their park and save themselves time and if they can use it five different ways with a five different variation 
And that's what I'm doing here, right? So I took this syrup machine and I had the idea of like, you know, I don't want them all just the same. Um, so you gotta have some variation. So this one's like overflowing. Um, mega, and I end up making it so like two guys are filling that one up, and they're just fueling it like crazy, and it's <laughs> it's overfilling. And then you got one that's like nobody's working at it, and it's like starting to dry up, and like it's it's tapped out, and it's not run, you know, it's not running anymore. Um, and then the one in the middle, it just has one guy working, and it's it's like a normal flow. And then the candy's going into the oven or whatever. I ended up changing that so. The one that's overflowing as the like overflowing candies like they're just packing it packing it and it's just it's just working so much and then more buckets over there less buckets at the first one you know a good amount in the middle so I just kind of tell telling a little bit of storytelling in here is just basically like these guys are working their butts off and there's freaking syrup everywhere and you know the other one it's this less and stuff so uh, I had fun with the syrup farm and you know it's it goes to show like just the tree and the syrup machine um, if I break it apart how much I can do with that and there's this whole little section you guys will see come together hopefully by the end of this episode you'll definitely see the finished thing in the next episode um, but you know it's a whole little syrup farm so you have multiple trees you got multiple syrup machines you got all the little wagons and stuff that sh she did and uh and then i ended up taking one of the honey jars i don't know if i do that in this episode or the next one but um i make like kind of self-serve syrup vending machines and um i actually put uh vending machines inside of them like gulpy vending machines so the guests will actually go up and pump their own honey they'll go up to like a honey machine and uh, get some syrup so they're manufacturing or you know growing and uh, harvesting and and converting all that syrup and then there's like the final product where the guests can go buy it so there's a there's a reason for this whole syrup farm but it's like one pretty big area dedicated to essentially if in theory three three vending machines <laughs> right yeah <laughs> the, the guests will go in and they'll <coughs> buy from these three vending machines um, but at the, in, in the in the process I also put you know a couple vista points down so they'll take pictures of the workers and the uh, little orchard there you know tree farm Mm -hmm. So it, it, they'll go in and you'll see the crowds of people taking pictures at the, at, at the uh, Vista points. They'll walk up to the machines and grab a soda, but it's technically a, uh, a bottle of syrup. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super cool. I like that. Yeah, so, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 that's, that's what some of the stuff is, what we're going to run into with uh, Candyland in, in, in general, but especially Fairground Farms, like, how do you make a honeybee grove or, you know, honeybee farm into something that the guests do in a park? It's it's not something you do in a park, right? Like, if you want to go to a honeybee farm, you go to a honeybee farm. You don't go to a park for that. So how do we turn that into something that's not just a scenery piece? Because, you know, that's... Fairground farms would technically be all scenery, nothing else. So what do the guests actually do here? So we got to find little ways to sneak in a vending machine into a in a syrup farm or you know um and i did that over with the honey as well so the, the guests will go buy honey there but luckily that ride skin is freaking amazing so they will be queuing up to go on that honey bee ride and then when they get off they'll buy some honey so that area will be populated with vista points people buying drinks and going on the honey bee ride so there will be activity there and you know it's something that you probably haven't seen in Planet Coaster. Uh, a syrup farm and a honeybee farm that guests interact with. And it's it's not something that's, you know, uh, native to parks in general. So it's something very specific to Fairground Farms. And I, and I really like that. Like, by the time we get through this and we go the, by the end of the Let's Build and where we're at today, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're already tanking our computer. <laughs> with just yeah, this area. That's, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good at all. But uh, <laughs> we'll, by the time we're done the project, we'll, we can use Cheat Engine and little tricks and things, and we'll we'll, we'll have a nice presentation. While pre you know, it'll it'll work out. There's luckily there's ways around it, um, but it it'll be one of those mega parks that run at like 10 FPS on the average computer. Um, <clears throat> I can be certain of that. But we're going to find ways to show it to you guys where you can fully enjoy what, what our hard work has 
you know, gone into. But it's getting a little bit crazy, and I was looking at it going, alright, Fairground Farms in and of itself is actually a pretty darn good group project. <laughs> like, if, if that's all we had planned, it would have been pretty good. Um, <clears throat> but now, you know, you can't just do a Fairground Farms on its own, because why do they grow all this candy? Well, they do it for the Cocoa Bog, and they do it for the Cupcake Kingdom, and they, you know, it just... The, what we've done here, having all these candy sections in this universe, they, they all work hand in hand, right? So exactly. You, you have to have these little sections, but I think this will be a learning experience for us that Candyland will be that project that we look back on and go, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> going forward in the future, I think you want, we want to do um, make use of that terrain a little bit more. Um, like yeah, and like let's just say I had some ideas for further group projects. I I don't think it's good to go. This is our park. We're going to do a western area, a sci-fi area, um, a fantasy area. No, no, because knowing what we do and how much blueprints we have, it's it's by the time we finish sci-fi, that'll be like t ten FPS. You know, <laughs> so for sure. So in the future, I think what we'll do is we'll try to plan these things where. All right, this is a sci-fi park. This is our western park. We try to do sprawling terrain and big centralized areas and let the coasters explore the terrain rather than just filling the terrain like a western freaking metropolis, you know? Um, but with Candyland, again, it's just one of those things that um, you can't not have the Cocoa Bog. You cannot not have Cupcake Kingdom. You can't not have Ice Cream Mountain and Licorice Lane, right? And if we simplified it all, it still wouldn't be the same. So we're pushing the capabilities of Planet Coaster with this park, for sure. It's, yeah. it's going to be epic, but uh, looking at Fairground Farms in and of itself and what kinds of things came up along the way and what, like... When when I pa I got I got burnt out. You'll see it in the next episode where I get to. I pass it over to Wix after that, and and then uh, what you ended up doing to the extra areas and and some th ideas I threw at you. It's we have so many different types of farms in this yeah really farm have. farmland. <laughs> so so much that I didn't expect it. Like when we planned it, I didn't think of a honeybee farm. I didn't even think of you know I didn't even have that idea in my head. And you guys with your wonderful blueprints. And that's why we wanted to make it a group project. Because I knew somebody's going to think of something that I wouldn't have. Right? And it's like that. If you took... If you got me to do, like, three cool creations. I'll give you my best three creations. If you tell me to do 30, I'm going to start cutting corners. You know? And, like, I'm, I'm going to... Or, or it's going to take me forever. Um, but if you tell 30 people to all make you their one best creation you're going to get the best out of everybody and yeah. for all 30 and at 30 times the rate. <laughs> <clears throat> so what we got from this process was um, your guys' best brilliant ideas for Fairground Farms and uh, the honeybee thing that, it, you know, so much detail gone into this honey stuff. I love it. It's my favorite thing in this, this Fairground Farms. Um, that's why I spent so much time here trying to make it work and try to make it interactive. There's something about it that just... You know, it's the natural sugars. It's it's just so good and it's vibrant. Yeah. I love it. These blueprints are amazing. Yeah, so there's a lot of good blueprints. I love them all, and we try to fit mm -hmm. them all, guys. Trust trust me. Um, we're still gonna be sneaking some in at the time of this recording. We're gonna go back and throw in a few things, and you know, some final touch ups and stuff. Um, so yeah, here we're at the cinematic shots. You can kind of see where I got to after my first day with this area. Not a whole lot, but it's blocking it out, kind of getting a feel for things, getting ideas in my head for where these blueprints are going to go and um, how it's going to look. Um, so it, it's about gray blocking that, getting the main vision and, you know, having that honeycomb farm, the sweet patch at the back. Um, I did spend more time on that rather than blocking out everything, but it, I wanted a get a home for that and in the next episode I start doing the crops and laying things out and thinking about the farmers market and different areas and and it, it starts to populate quite quickly but just in this episode nailing that first initial um, green rolling hills like we saw from the sign that Taco King made for us that was very vital 
um, and getting getting that honeybee farm in and the natural sweet areas that was vital to me as well. And and now I can look back and zoom out at it all, see how my path work works. And same with pl pl planning how that track ride's gonna work with the lake and stuff, that was also vital. So now I can see like, okay, what do I have to work with? And going in the next episode, it's a matter of like, okay, what's this area gonna become? And what's this gonna be area to become? And then when I fill, 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 and I go buck wild, <laughs> <laughs> I get I get so burnt out I gotta pass it to Wix and then and you guys will see what he does and then he passes on a chant so lots of building went on over the last week here um, and we got lots more to show you guys so it's a simple episode um, but stay tuned we got plenty more yeah I really like uh, what you did here Johnny it looks very very nice and I really like the uh, interaction you made with the queue line the exit going underneath the uh, big uh, honeycomb Oh, thanks. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very neat. Oh. Yeah, and we have more more to talk about in the next episode, so we'll have that one coming out shortly. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for joining me, Wix. You're welcome. And we'll see you guys in the next Let's Build. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>